This video will not have a good thumbnail or title and perhaps is about nothing at all. I thank you for being here and welcome. And now I'm gonna talk for an hour. I have no doubt everything will be fine in the end. Even if there is a reset, these horses are proof of that. Wild horses. Recently, the Bureau of Land Management has been rounding them up again. I was very sad to see that. Very sad indeed. We are all homeless. Not really, but with government standing in the way, we are homeless. Here, the Bureau of Land Management. And this is their management. They're gonna kick the horses off. God forbid the horses have free rein. And you can see oil trucks in the background, and that's all my area cares about, is oil. And cattle. So they're gonna kick these horses off the land, so they can lease this land to big oil companies and to ranchers who are just going to let their cattle turn this into even more of a wasteland than it already is. And these horses will get the boot. And what a worthless agency, land management, kicking the horses off and inviting the toxic big oil corporations in. And it's a very touchy subject for me. I think it has everything to do with our freedom. It's not just the horses, it's us. We too don't have land. We are all homeless. And if you look out here, just standing in this one spot, we can see in all directions for a hundred miles. And there's no people out here. There's only these horses and some antelope. And one day I'll get upset and demand land for the people. When we know how false our history is and what may have transpired here, to get this artificial ball rolling, then I think we would eventually want to see some change. When you realize we've been lied to about everything, there seems to only be two options. Two, two or three. One is just to purely accept and go on as if nothing has changed. And one is to try to change things and get the truth out there for more and try to create a better system of the one that already exists. And the third option would be to create a whole new system completely. A new community and new schools and be responsible for every aspect of one's life as a community, doing things correctly. And right now we've seen a lot of protesting in Canada. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that word. And I think the truckers have realized how powerful they really are, and they are, like some sleeping giant waking up. And the truckers are one great example of a part of our society realizing how much power they really have. Reminding me of the book Dune and the Navigators having a monopoly over travel and transportation. And the problem is, is these truckers may not be acting in unison. But they may. And this is a spiritual war, I believe. And we are a society, realm-wide, comprised of different occupations, sectors, and industries. And I think the spiritual war has to do with the individual versus the collective. The individual being the spirit, the sovereign being, needing to answer to nobody but God, if you choose. And when we see what they've done to China, for example, a nation so full of history, we are told thousands of years of history. And I believe in, I've said it before, the knowledge coming out of China is too advanced to be a mere one or two hundred years of knowledge, especially pertaining to food, health and medicine, healing practices such as Qigong, such sciences, feng shui, understanding every intricate detail of this realm, physically and spiritually. And to me, this would take 
at least a thousand years from just the knowledge that I've had the opportunity to study. And perhaps the more oppressive the government, the more indication that we may be dealing with a survivor people, survivors of the reset, and hence the importance by the controllers to erase their culture and put them in an oppressive political state, outlawing old customs and overworking the people. But again, we are all homeless. I don't know any nation that gives their people at least an acre of land or access to water for free. And I can't believe the times we're living in. Forget about these basic rights being met. We're discussing the right to remain needle-free, to not have things pumped into our bloodstream. And who would have thought it would have come to this so quickly? When Obama was president, I was very upset that we were being forced to buy health care. I didn't want it. I wanted nothing to do with the system. And at the time, I even worked at a hospital. And I was outraged. And I refused to buy it, and I was fined $1,500 per year. An outrage. And that's nothing compared to what we're dealing with now. Now we're not even talking about the healthcare, now it's forced procedures. What other forced procedures would they like to impose? And here this fine, fine parliament building was completed around 1865, give or take a little, only to burn in 1866 and be rebuilt in the exact same fashion. And here the sweet irony is everybody's protesting around this building. Just an extra unfortunate slap in the people's face. The controllers must laugh at us. Look at this take up here. They must laugh at how clueless the people really are while everybody's focused on this issue. Not seeing the bigger picture, with the exception of our little community. And does it really matter? Even with this understanding that we have, what are we really going to do? Here we have a government building with all the elements of a cathedral. The thing is just scorched, even though we're told they rebuilt it after it burnt. And nobody seems to care. Everybody thinks this is just normal. Strangely, they have omitted any history. Maybe they realized how sloppy and transparent their lies were. And of course the library in the back, my favorite. So again, if you could do or say anything, or the controllers can, until the people wake up and realize that this wasn't built in the 1850s. What we're experiencing here is like the emperor wears no clothes. And as long as people don't see through this, they can continue to tell the people whatever they want. They sit the people down and shape their reality. Here, for example, is Stadium High School in Tacoma, Washington. Stadium High School, looking like a castle. The stadium was designed in 1910. It was originally much grander than it is today with a seating capacity of 32,000 for a high school and a really glorious castle-esque high school perhaps even Starfort a great example of a repurposement and really having that same kind of feeling as the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec but just smaller, but the same kind of feel. And the chateau, we are told, is a railroad hotel. And this one is a high school. And here we have El Paso High School. It's the oldest operating high school in Texas. Or El Paso, Texas. It was established in 1916. Let's look at this baby. Here we go. 1916 High School. Complete with amphitheater. 
And before one false lesson is uttered, the whole thing is just established on a lie. This is not a high school. A 1916 high school. One, two, three, four stories. Plus this underground one. A fifth underground with beautiful little tunneled entrances on either side. Come on, Texas? Early 1900s Texas? Like this? A postcard? A high school postcard? A postcard to help propagate the lie. Here we go. Costing half a million dollars. Such a nice round number. A clean half a million. Fireproof and modern in every respect. This stadium has a seating capacity of 8,000. How many other high schools have postcards? It's so unsettling, to be honest. It's like whoever made these postcards knew the lie. Understood how glorious these buildings were. Worthy of slapping on a postcard. And yet this is just a high school. A high school does not need to be glorious. And most today are not. And here we go. Above the front doors, a bronze tablet bears these words. A cultivated mind is the genius of democracy. It is the only dictator that free men acknowledge and the only security that free men desire. And what do they mean here? What they're saying is an indoctrinated mind. And this is completely backwards. But it's also the truth in plain sight. The lie itself is the dictator. And in 1922, the Triple K decided to change the name of the school. Of course, they were concerned with the name. And what else could I talk about? Tonight I'm in a strange mood. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a historical box, living in the past. But long before I ever got into this particular research, I was into discovering the truth of the nature of our reality, and went down hundreds of rabbit holes. And I think in this community we want to go forward, and I think one can. I remember the old Mud Flood channel. After about 50 videos, historical videos, made one, and one of his last ones, where he'd figured it all out from this historical perspective. He'd figured out which key players were involved, and it seemed to hit him like a ton of bricks, very emotional, and he felt as if he could no longer share this information. It was too shocking, too terrifying, and he deleted his channel. And I didn't think that it was such a big deal. It really just came down to these families, these controlling dozen families that we've all heard of. And personally, I didn't think it was so scary. I don't care who created this false narrative. I only care about the truth. And not so specifically. I don't need every detail. To know I've been lied to is enough. Whether it's the modern space programs or the history of the Americas, it really doesn't matter to me. And I knew the system was a lie long ago. And I've never been one to go from A to B to C. Usually just moving from A to Z and then going back and filling in the gaps. And really, it is like the Matrix. They just need us as fuel, just running in circles, feeding the system. And it would be so easy to stop feeding them. Stop voluntarily filing paperwork and get right with your home and food. Educate your own children. Don't let other people 
teach them what to think. And if people weren't in debt for their homes and everything else, then they would have enough. They would have more for themselves and to do what they wish to do. They could be educating themselves or learning new skills or just enjoying themselves. All these lies are kept in place to make us feel vulnerable and afraid, as if there is lack, as if we should be grateful for the little that we have. And now I want to talk about the moon. Of course, we've discussed how the moon may be a reflection of our realm. And I've been looking into vibes of cosmos, and I've been wanting to do some research to see if some of these craters on his map actually match up. And so this projection reflects, or is a reflection, of our realm. And now what of the phases of the moon? Now the idea that the moon is showing its same face seems to be accepted by almost all members of civilization. But today I propose that the moon might actually be spinning, and not in the stupid way that the mainstream would tell us, but in this way. As we can see in this clock in Prague, one of the oldest clocks in the realm, what we notice is this hand right here is the moon hand. And as it spins, the hand that is, the moon itself also spins. And let's have a look at that. We can see it spinning around and around, just rolling from the dark side to the light side. Dark and light. And now it may be that our realm is casting a reflection on this luminary. The same reflection always cast. However, it spins as well. And here we have the phases of our moon because it is spinning. And I believe the sun would be doing the same thing. And this clock just showing us how it is. At least when it comes to the phases of the moon, just spinning in this fashion. Of course, not that quick. And here somebody sent me a chunk of the Palace of Fine Arts. And I thank you for this. I've been wanting to share it for months now. And what a strange concrete. Now, if you remember, they try to tell us that they rebuilt the palace in the 60s. And I've made several videos sharing that pointing out the anomalies. One of the greatest anomalies being that the artwork is adorned with swastikas. Of course, we know it to be a symbol of the old world, but if you were rebuilding the palace in the 60s, surely you would leave out this now culturally sensitive art design. But really interesting. Let me know if you've ever seen concrete with this makeup. And it's actually very light weight. And very soon I look forward to returning to this lime kiln in Salt Lake City. Just very puzzling. Really bothering me. I just really want to raise some hell. And maybe smash this back wall in. Or cut some of this ivy down. Reveal this wall behind here. Dig this out. I'm just so upset that this is history that has been sold to a residence. Just erasing history. This old wall covered with their stupid landscaping. And it is pretty landscaping, don't get me wrong. But when you realize that it's completely covering up very possibly one of the oldest ruins in Salt Lake City. We're even told that this lime kiln was one of the first things they built. And they're somewhat preserving this one. 
and down here are covering this one up. Completely unacceptable. Even if I was just a Mormon, I would be outraged. This is history. Whether you believe the mainstream one or not, it should still concern everybody to preserve history. And one of these days, I always seem to remember on the weekend, but I'm going to call up the city and raise some hell. And one last little thing I want to show is this Walgreens. Walgreens is some pharmacy, some 24-hour drugstore. And this is a brand new Walgreens. Brand, 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 brand new. I watched them build it years ago. Nothing old about this at all. And I found it really interesting that they had actually built this. They had built a bricked-in looking window. And this is really cheap facing kind of brick. Again, there's nothing old about this building. But yet they made it look old. This is like some charming feature. The old mud flood look is desirable. And here just faking it, which I thought was really interesting. Well, I think that's it. I thank you for joining me this week. Do have a blessed day. I love you all. And God bless.